speaking of Texas and the foolishness, um, we can go on to just Republicans and their foolishness. So, uh, in a very historic election in 2020, you know, we know, you know, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were elected and, you know, Democrats took back the Senate and a uh, record amount of voters turned out uh, in the middle of a pandemic. A lot of that is people were just really, really wanted to get rid of Donald Trump, <laughs> you know. So, I, I, and yet still, millions of people wanted Trump back in there. So, but, you know, we had a record turnout. So, you know, Republicans, when they see that, they're not thinking, yes, more people voting. That's what we need for a true democracy. They're like, how can we make that not happen ever again? More Because if you just historically, the more people vote, the less advantageous it is for Republicans. I think in seven of the last eight presidential elections, Republicans have lost the popular vote. That means the majority of the country don't fool it. <laughs> you know, th they have ways through electoral college and through all these ways to still have power anyway. And that's what they're trying to hold on to. Rather than trying to be more popular, have policies that appeal to more people, we're just going to stop people who don't think the way we do. So in, in I think, four to three different states, they're rolling out um, voters, you know, frankly, just voter suppression bill. So in, in Georgia, they, um, so that's the one that's getting out of focus right now, but Texas is up next. Um, let's see, the, the specific restrictions on the the Georgia um, voting. And so the way these people move, so in Georgia, Republicans control the House, the Senate, and the governor. They pass all the shit within one day. <laughs> you know, no, no time to debate and go on the news and argue about it. They say, we're just going to get this over in one day. And so they do things like um, restrict the number of drop-off boxes. So for like mail-in voting, right? So instead of having these hundreds of, uh, I'm just throwing out the number, dozens of drop-off boxes through a particular county, we're going to limit it now to just a couple. And in past election, those were open 24 seven, but now we're going to restrict it to certain hours. So if you work outside of those hours, you don't get to drop off your mail-in votes. Um, another thing is um, they're forbidding people from being for, for, from giving food and water to people who are waiting in line to vote. Now, why is that significant is, uh, you know, you have these really long lines of people needing to vote. And so different organizations, activist groups, were coming and providing people with water and food, you know, to make the wait easier. And, and and that's not by accident. They they did a study that said in predominantly black areas, the average time to vote was 53 minutes. And in white areas, the average time to vote was seven minutes. So they do these things saying it's not racial, but bottom line is going to impact certain, you know, you know, black people more than others. And so as a so that's what they're doing in Georgia. Texas is doing similar things like limiting early voting hours, um, you know, prohibit drive-through voting, things that made it much easier to vote in Texas. So Republicans are doing this throughout the country. And so, you know, you know, it's now how do we respond to this? And so what many activists are doing is like leaning on businesses to say, you know what, you you know, when, for example, the George Floyd murder, you know, it became trendy and popular to, you know, put out a Black Lives Matter t-shirt and Netflix have, you know, black collection and, you know, everybody is popular to be supportive of black stuff, right? But now when there are these measures that are going against a, a large segment of your, your customers, you're silent. So a lot of activists have been putting on pressure onto to companies to say, you know what, you need to speak up, not just with your not with, with your voice, but with your actions. So Major League Baseball, uh, just as I finish setting this up, 
There, the All-Star Game for Major League Baseball was set to be in Atlanta. Um, as a result of this, Major League Baseball decided to say, you know what? Um, as a result of these actions, we're going to move our game from Atlanta to, you know, to Colorado, to, to, to Denver, Colorado. Um, because, you know, that, that's our way of speaking, um, our opposition to this. And, you know, of you course, have to do, you, you know, in the pocket. Exactly. So, but, all right. So, I have, a, I have a question about that, and and it's a it's a difficult situation because when you think about it, the hundreds of thousands of people who would come to um, Atlanta, you know, to spend money and go to this restaurant, go to this bar, um, not coming anymore. So, it's going to have an economic impact. So a lot of, you know, like, you know, Stacey Abrams, who's, you know, as big a voter proponent as she is, she's not really supportive of a boycott because it end up impacting a lot of our people. So with that said, um, do you, are you supportive of a boycott to make a, 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 a principal stance in this case, um, even if it impacts you know, um, low wage workers and, you know, small businesses. Uh, do you think that the point of making a statement is more important? Tex, you spoke upon it. So um, what do you think about that? Um, I'm in support of it. Um, if it's organized and, and, and done correctly. I know uh, for years now, I've been, uh, tell me if you hear heard about this, but there's always a day where they say um, we're going to suppress the back black dollar and yep, 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 yep. black people, you know, they say don't spend, you know, mm -hmm. think something, something like that. So I, I don't know how effective that's been, but if something like that is done and organized, you know, correctly, I think that will make an impact because that, that's what they care about. They care about revenue. They care about money. They care about dollars. You know, they care, they care about patronage. So what you have to do is actually hit them in the pocket, you know, for them to wake up. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. And that, that's, uh, that's a good point about, um, you know, they, I forgot, I forgot exactly what it's called, but when yeah. black people don't spend anything on this day, so they realize right. how right. much of an economic impact we have. Um, Mika, what do you think? Uh, is that a good approach? to boycott to get these people's attention? I think in the real world, it's a it's a good idea. But I'm wondering how well we can organize that um, to make it not impact the, the lower class or the lower socioeconomic groups. Um, we would have to have some system in place. And I, don't, I also don't think that one day is going to be sufficient to send the point across. I think it would have mm -hmm. to be a, probably a week or even half of a week um, to really show them the impact that we have, we have as black people on the economy. And um, I just think that we would have to find some way to provide for those who can't, can't but go out to spend to buy something. You know, like those people who are re reliant on like fast food chains, those people who are reliant on you know the, the the neighborhood store, and and how do we really go about doing that? That's an mm -hmm. added task, you know. Yeah, uh, you know. So it uh, economic boycotts aren't. Uh, it's not comfortable, right? <laughs> it, it is going to make things uncomfortable for people. So if like historically, if you look at the like the Montgomery bus boycott, right? Um, and I think we talked about this on here before, where like at first I thought that lasted for like a few, like a few weeks, you know, like six seven weeks. It lasted for over a year, <laughs> where where black people said we are going to walk to work. We're not taking this bus because you wouldn't, you know, let you know Rosa Parks, you know, we're we are taking a stand against this. Now, did I'm sure that impacted some black people, you know, who work for the bus company that may clean up the bus station and revenue not coming in so i'm sure it impacted people negatively um however you know it's it made a powerful statement which drove 
social change, you know? So uh, I think this is a similar thing where it sucks that some, you know, here we're talking about, you know, a, a week or, you know, pretty much a, a week of activities around All-Star Game. Um, businesses would get a sugar high from that boost, not going to get that, um, you know, and, and that, you know, but beyond that, people are talking about boycotting all um, Georgia-based companies who don't use their, 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 their voice and their power to speak up, like Coca-Cola, like Home Depot, like um, Delta Airlines, you know, who <laughs> say, you know what? You have this position, you know, you, a large percentage of your customers are black people. You know, you use your power to do something about this. Um, and, you know, I, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that some, there's going to be people who are negatively impacted by it. But, you know, you do what you can with what you have. You know, you, whatever position you have, you are as a, as a, as a customer, you can, you speak with your boycott. Um, as a business, you speak with how you fund campaigns. Um, so these are things um, that we have within our power to do. Um, and, you know, I support it. It's, it's not a comfortable thing, uh, but, you know, I support it. So uh, especially, what do you say? The, the, you know, I agree with what everybody said, but you said the issue. <laughs> Thank you. We can move on now. Is, it, <laughs> Boycott will Anything work. Anything else but. <laughs> Boycott will work, but here's the issue. A lot of us are not brave enough to follow through, right? And mm. that is where, you know, um, yeah. the impact will really lie. And because, you know, you, my, my granny always has a boy, if you can't hear, you have to feel. But some people, them can't chance to feel. That is mm. the problem, right? You have mm. some people who cannot do this boycott because they need every every hour the day with their work they need the income right mm -hmm. so i mean when mika said if it is very well organized where people can kind of budget feed before and then make a huge impact on a day when it is important i think it can can work and work effectively but other than from that you know one or two days or you know i mean even a couple of days that alone will not impact, you know, where they'll they'll decide to make a real drastic change. Because, you know, uh, people just, they're scared. And people need to survive. And people, if they don't work, people they cannot survive. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, until until they're able to, to make themselves irrelevant, to fix a problem, it's never going to happen the way it should. Right? It's just going to take something drastic for all of these changes to occur. Other than from that, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, so, you know, they, I think the other point that this brings up uh, is, you know, they've talked about other, you know, like boycotting certain companies and certain companies speaking out and what have you. Um, this didn't get re attention until Major League Baseball decided to say, we're going to move the game from Atlanta um, to Denver. And so what this brings up is, the importance of sports in driving societal change. Um, there are all kinds of examples throughout history. You know, Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier in, 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 uh, in, in baseball, being the first black person um, to play in Major League Baseball. Um, the 68 Olympics um, with Colin Kaepernick um, deciding to take a knee. So, I mean, like all now, to this day, you know, that because that one man, Colin Kaepernick, decided to take a knee and he hasn't played a down of pro football since and to as advocacy for black lives all over the world <laughs> in england before they play every football game at the beginning of the game they stop and they take a knee <laughs> in cricket in, 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 all over the world because of this one man deciding to say, I'm going to take a position on this and I'm going to take a knee for this cause. So sp sports is so important in driving societal change. Um, as, as an example of a, a current issue, which is, it's not probably not very well known outside of people who went to the University of Texas like I do. 
So there is the song that, you know, that, you know, they sing at the end of every game, the eyes of Texas are upon you all the live long day, right? And just in the recent years, I've, you know, many of us have learned that the origin of that song um, was, you know, like a minstrel thing back in the 1920s or whatever, where, you know, some college frat boys in blackface were singing a song about the eyes of the South are upon you, um, you know, you cannot get away talking about catching slaves, basically. <laughs> you know, they've changed their words over the years. And, you know, so that has been a big issue with, you know, the University of Texas athletes. And it, it has come to a, you know, a lot of, you know, um, issues have come up around that. Now, as black alumni, you know, who are trying to, you know, make certain, get certain changes done, you know, we can speak by not donating to this and not spending on this and what have you, but the people who can have the most immediate impact in making change on this is the athletes who are on the field. Because, you know, they, they literally had, um, you know, alumni who, you know, say, you know, basically, you know, saying, you know, basically, basically shut up and go away. I forgot the exact quotes, but, you know, these rich white shut alumni who don't... Who, yeah, it, essentially, that's what yeah. you know. That's what they're saying, um, because you know, those of us black alumni, you know, we can not spend on certain things, but UT not missing that drop in the bucket. But if if you get some athletes to say, you know what, okay, we're going to transfer to you know to to TSU or to PV and to um, or A and M or OU or some other school, then they will pay attention. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, sports. You know, people kind of trivialize it as just a child, childhood game. It can have a significant impact in driving social change. So, uh, you know, I just and want I, to say... Too, because me, go ahead. I, I was saying particularly too, because a great deal of our sports personalities are black. So mm -hmm. if we have something to make a point, you know... The good ones anyway. <laughs> So, okay. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> Otherwise, too, but I get what they're saying. Um, yeah. Some of the very popular ones. Let's just put it that way. Um, yeah. Are that. And you know, if we want to make a point, I think that that would be a good starting point. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I have to. I, I have to just big up people who will leverage their platform yeah. um, to maximize effectiveness. You know. LeBron James, I can I can talk about you know LeBron all day long for what he does as, as an activist, you know. Um, and what but, he did in the bubble was real good too, because they walked off the field that day and were like, no, unless you guys pay attention to Brianna, you're not playing. Yeah, exactly. So you know, that's it, cool. It, but it, the, the best the best um, advocate for me was always Muhammad Ali. I mean, oh, he yeah. stepped away during the middle of his career. Definitely, you know, yeah. to bring attention to that. So, when when I think yeah. about you know people athletes that actually made a difference, that's the main one. Yeah, yeah, and, and you, you you know you talk about somebody like you know, and I don't think we can fully appreciate just how difficult that was at the time, <laughs> right? In the sixties, in the middle of a war, um, with you know all issues going on regarding civil rights. Um, for this Cassius Clay to now become Muhammad Ali and to say, you know what? Because I as a black man can barely get enough rights here, I'm not going over to Vietnam to kill some to Vietnamese. I don't even know. They don't hate uh, when I don't even have rights here. Yeah. And again, this is not like when he was at the end of his career. And so think of how much money that man pissed off he by making that principal right? position. Yeah, you know, so that, that that is the ultimate courage, um, you know, and using his platform and standing on principle, you know, um, you know, just utmost respect for Muhammad Ali for taking that position. And anybody who 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 who's fallen in that mold since, you know, credit Ali. Ali is kind of the originator of that to doing it at that level. You know, yeah, somebody at that saying, level of their that career. Some some people just not brave enough to do it. Some of the more influential people, you know, they're just not willing to do that because they're not willing to sacrifice. 
And you know, one thing you learn about America, if you don't, if you're not going to sacrifice, you're not going to do anything. You're not going to influence anything. You're not just going to make it. If you don't yeah. sacrifice. Hey, Michael know? Jordan, my yeah. favorite basketball player of all time. He's just not that dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, not, he's, exactly. he's, 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 he's just not that dude. Yeah. Never, you know, never uh, claimed to be. None of that. Yeah. And, he's and like, but, you know. Of uh, 50 million black people in the U.S., we spend about $1 trillion a year. Mm. $1 trillion. That's, 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 uh, that's serious <laughs> money. That's almost as much money as you <laughs> have. He's a black people. Jamaica don't even make that amount. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I, I read that one time. It's it's yeah. larger than the GDP of like a large percentage of the countries yeah. in the world. What black community within the U.S. spends? You know, but you know, you know, we have a, uh, we have, we just have to channel our power accordingly. You know, they they understand dollars, they understand votes, um, utilize that to move things you know um in our favor <laughs> yeah man so uh big up everybody who is doing something with their position and we just have to realize that we all have we're not all lebron we're not all jordan we're not all you know uh have that platform but we can do what we can do with what we have and that's all right. that we can expect to do do as much as you can as what you have 